We welcome you to the Sunday service and um, I'm glad that you all are, I believe that you all are, you all are safe and sound and doing wonderful and enjoying the presence of God. And so today we are going to worship the Lord. We're going to lift his name higher. We're going to magnify his name. And um, we know that God is holy, he's wonderful, he's, he's been faithful and he's leading us. So today we will, we will worship the Lord with wherever we are, however we are seated, wherever we, whatever we are doing, we just set everything aside and we'll look to the Lord and say, thank you, Lord, for yet another day of your faithfulness, yet another day of your goodness in our life. So before we get into worshiping the Lord and uh, spending some time in His presence, let's bow down our heads and pray and ask the Lord that He will lead us, that He will help us to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this beautiful time, O oh God. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness, for your mercies, for your goodness. They are everlasting, O oh God. Lord, you know the depths of our heart, yet, O oh Lord, you love us the same. Your love towards us has never changed, has never reduced, and Lord, nothing can separate us from your love, O oh God. Even as, Lord, this morning we worship you, O oh God, we want to spend some time in your presence to glorify your name, to lift your name. Lord, I pray that you will lead us, Lord, to worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for this beautiful time. And Lord, even as we worship you, Father, help us, God, to lift you high, to see you high, to raise your name above every other name, O oh God. We worship you. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. Come with the time into your loving hands. In Jesus' matchless and worthy name I pray. Amen. Amen. To see you high and lifted up Shining in the light of your glory Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy Let's all open our mouth and sing to the Lord and say, Lord, open the eyes of my heart Open the eyes of my heart, Lord Open the eyes of my heart I want to see you, I want to see you, open the eyes of my heart, Lord, open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you, to see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of the glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy To see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy Open the eyes, open the eyes of my heart, Lord Open the eyes of my heart I want to see you I want to see you Open the eyes of my heart, Lord Open the eyes of my heart I want to see you I want to see you To see you high See you high and lift it up Shining in the light of your glory Pour out your power and love As we sing holy, holy, holy To see you high and lifted up Shining in the light of your glory Pour out your power and love As we sing holy, holy, holy Holy, holy, holy Holy, holy, holy Holy, holy, holy I want to see you Holy, holy, 
holy, holy, holy, holy, holy, holy, holy, I want to see you. When Jesus was on this earth and when he was going through, there was a blind man whose name was Bartimaeus. He, he shouted on the top of his voice and said, Son of David, Jesus of Nazareth, have mercy on me. The disciples, however, shut his mouth and said, keep quiet. But he shouted all the more and said, Son of David, have mercy on me. And when he was brought to the Lord, the Lord Jesus asked him, what do you want of me? The blind man said, Rabboni, I just want to see. He didn't ask for riches or wealth or wisdom or, or anything else. But he said, I just want to see, Lord. And the Lord said, go on your way. Your faith has made you whole. This morning, I urge you, brethren. I urge you, my dear brothers and sisters. I urge you, church. What do you want to see? God is asking you, what do you want from me? Your answer, is it I want to see or is it anything else? Let us have the mindset of that, that blind man saying, Lord, I want to see you. I want to see you, Lord. I want to see your redemption in my life. I want to see your goodness in my life. I want to see deliverance in my life. I want to see heavens opening up for me, Lord. I want to see Red Seas being parted, Lord. I want to see Jericho's being fallen down, Lord. I want to see you, Lord Jesus. To see you high and lift her up. Shining in the light of your glory. We want to see more of you, Lord. Your glory, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. Arise, 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 arise. On a praise arise. Psalms 22 verse 3 says, But you are holy and thrown on the praises of Israel. So let's enthrone the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, on our praises today. Mm. One thing we ask of you one thing that we desire that as we worship you lord come and change our lives arise 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 take your place on our praise arise, King of kings, holy God, as we sing arise, arise, arise. One thing we ask of you. One thing that we desire, that as we worship you, Lord, come and change our lives. Arise, 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 take your place. Oh, and I pray the right King of kings. 
King, Holy God, as we sing, arise, 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 arise. We'll lift you up. We lift you up. We lift you up. We lift you up on our praises. We lift you up. We lift you up. We lift you up on our praises. We lift you up. We lift you up. Come on. We lift you up on our praises. We lift you up. We lift you up. We lift you up on our praises. We lift you up. We lift you up. We lift you up on our praises. Arise, 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 take your place, be enthroned on our praise, arise, King of kings, holy God, as we sing. Bible says in the book of Revelation I'm going to read a few verses from the book of Revelation chapter 4 verse 8 to 11 we are worshipping a God who is holy and the four living creatures each having six wings were full of eyes around and within and they do not rest day or night saying holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, who was and is, and is and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying you are worthy O Lord to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they exist and were created yes Lord you are holy you are worthy to be praised we lift your name O God Ah uh... 
hallelujah for the Lord God Almighty reigns. Hallelujah. Hallelujah for the Lord God Almighty reigns. Hallelujah, oh, holy, holy, are you Lord God Almighty, worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Lamb, you are holy. Holy, are you Lord God Almighty? Worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Lamb, Amen. Hallelujah. Let's all sing together. Hallelujah, for the Lord God Almighty reigns. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, for the Lord God Almighty reigns. Hallelujah, holy, holy, are you Lord God Almighty, worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Lamb, for you are holy. Are you Lord God Almighty? What is what is what is the Lamb? What is the Lamb? For you are holy, holy. Are you Lord God Almighty? What is the Lamb? What is Holy, holy, are you Lord God Almighty? What is the Lamb? What is the Lamb? What is the Lamb? Seated on the throne, the twenty-four elders bow down to you. So you are worthy of it all. You are worthy, Lord. You alone are worthy, Lord Jesus, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We bow down at your feet, Lord.
Thank you, Jesus. We fall down at your feet, Lord. We bow down to you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, Lord. We fall down. We lay our crown at the feet of Jesus. The greatness of mercy and love at the feet of Jesus. We cry, holy, holy, holy. We cry, holy, holy, holy. We cry, holy. sing together once again we fall down we lay our crown at the feet of Jesus the greatness the greatness of mercy and life at the feet of Jesus we cry cry holy Lord we join together with the angels and the elders Lord and we bow down to you we lay our life to you God, and we lift your name and we say holy 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 is the Lord God Almighty who was who is and who is to come what a privilege God you've given to us God to worship you who is in heaven and we being on earth, Lord. We are nothing in front of you, O God. Yet, Lord, it's your love. It's your mercy. It's you, O God, that has loved us with an everlasting love. And we want to say, Lord, we want to see you lifted high. We want to lift your name high, Lord. And Lord, we cry holy, 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 is the Lord God Almighty. Thank you, God, for you are an awesome God. You are great. You do miracles so great. And nothing on earth, nor in heaven, nor anything, Lord, can compare with you, O God. We love you. We thank you. And we praise you and worship you, God. Lord, all the songs that we sang, all the verses that we read, Lord, may it be a pleasing aroma to you, God. You be honored and glorified. 
In Jesus' matchless and worthy name, I offer all this praise and worship. Amen and amen. Good morning, Royal Signets. Thank you all for joining in. Thank you all for tuning in. Thank you, everybody else who are not from the Royal Signet family. Thank you for uh, watching on, on YouTube, wherever you are. I hope you enjoyed the worship service. And uh, uh, thanks, a big thanks, a shout out to our our team here at Royal Signet to make this happen Sunday after Sunday. Can you believe we are in the ninth month of the year? Four more months and 2020 is done. God has brought us safe. God has brought us this far. And He has been so mindful of you. He has been so mindful of me. He has been so mindful of our families, of our children. You know, thanks be to God. How much thankful we have to be to God. You know, day in, day out, that is something which we need to be reminded. Lord, we thank you for who you are and what you've done for us. Uh, God has been speaking to us this season on on being free in Christ. You know, uh, f- finding freedom by living out of the tree of life and not of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Last Sunday, God spoke to us about about the words of life. You know, the words that come out because because a tongue, you know, can produce life and death, can kill or give life to someone, and it is our choice. The, the words that come out of our mouth, whether it gives life. Today, we are going to, we are going to study on, on uh, the living word. God's word is living. God's word is active. God word, God's word is powerful. So we're going, to, we're going to study the living word, that is the word of God, the Bible that God has given us. Let's turn our Bibles to Joshua chapter 1, verses 6 through to 8. Joshua chapter 1, verses 6 through to 8. I'm reading from the... Uh, NLT version. Be strong and courageous, for you are the one who will lead this people to possess all the land I swore to their ancestors I would give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. Study the book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night, so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. Let's close our eyes and let's pray. Father Lord Jesus, we thank you, O God. Thank you for this wonderful Sunday morning you have given us. Speak to us through your word. Lord, I'm just a messenger. Use me, O Lord, and and anybody, whoever is hearing me this morning. Lord Father, we pray that your word goes on good soil. Lord Father, take away all the distractions. And Father, we want to we want to hear your word in full. And 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 as we as these words are written on the tablets of our heart, Father, it may be practical, it may be alive, it may be powerful, and it, it may do the necessary surgery. Uh, in our lives and father so that we conform to you O god speak to us this morning your holy spirit be our guide in jesus name amen imagine if somebody offered you a special gift that you would that would guarantee you direction that would guarantee you prosperity that would guarantee you success wouldn't you want to get hold of that you know the the word uh, this gift this word of god the bible will give you the ability to rise above any circumstance you stand against any enemy this is the word of god this is the word of god that keeps you from sin that keeps you from destruction that keeps you from despair you know we all would be eager to receive this gift so we sometimes underestimate the bible we sometimes underestimate the word of God because we have access to all the power that Jesus had and if you read God's word if you read and apply the Bible in our lives daily we will see God fulfilling his promises you know to us yes it is pages it is words it is font whatever but through that God will speak to us now let me take your attention right to in the beginning God you know during that time Jesus was present at the world's beginning and he is in the word and Jesus and the word of God are the same you know the Bible teaches us and and it's quite profound right and Jesus the the word was manifested in human form when Jesus came into the earth the word of God was manifested in human form and through the word through the Bible 
Jesus has been manifested on on these written pages. You may you may you may see it on a device or or, or, or a physical Bible or in those pages where you lift it by hand. You know, Jesus has been manifested in there. And if Jesus appeared to you in person right now, if Jesus appeared to you in person, in, in flesh right now, and someone around you was sick or just, you probably wouldn't have any trouble believing that Jesus would heal and set them free. But trust me, the the same power, as that same power that existed Jesus in person is available to us through the word of God. You know, if, if, as if he was in person, the word of God is powerful and, and we have to receive that truth in order to to, 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 to work in our lives and also, you know, live a, f- a life of freedom. So t- today we'll, we'll, we'll dig a bit deeper. Now, if at some time we feel the word of God, we feel the Bible has lost its power, it's not because the word has changed. It's not because the word of God has changed, because his, his word will never change. It's because you know something has stopped us mixing the word and our faith you know so it is not the bible it is not the word of god it is it is either us or we are not doing something and 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 probably a priority if you want to fall in love with jesus we need to fall in love with the word of god we need to find him in the word we need to make the word of god priority in our lives and if you want to if you want more power we need to consume god's word day in day out then the word will become alive. There is no, there is no, um, you know, th- there is no other formula. For the formula, for the word of God to come alive in our lives, we need to consume God's word and God's word has to be real in us. The word spirit, the word spirit in, 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 in Greek is called pneuma. It means the breath of God. Or the presence, the God's presence. You know, when, when God made you and me, when God made Adam, you know for, for you probably it's, it's more easy to relate to God when God made Adam. God formed Adam to the dust of the earth so basically how we take a how a potter forms a, uh, the shape of, of, of a pot or a, or a clay I you know God formed Adam you know in, in, in the image of him and God breathed into it. God's breath was given to him so when we breathe we carry with the breath of God. And that's what that's what we and this is this is this is this is what the Bible tells and and the, and the Bible is just not a collection of words, you know, like how you read in a fiction or or or, or it is it is a it's a book which is alive and 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 the book that you can study to improve our lives on a daily basis. It's it's a powerful it's a powerful um, body of truth, you know, when when the, when the very breath of God has has power to bring its own fulfillment through the word of god and that is the bible that is the living word that is the word of god and so the word is literally spirit and life and if we try to understand the bible with only a mind it will be dry and without any power so studying the word is important studying god's word is important but if you do not include the spirit of god in the process the words will which we read will be just like words on a page it will be just like reading any other book so if you experience uh, with the bible has been it has not been uh, exciting at this point you know just be assured that you are not alone you know, we were all in the, in, that, in that journey. Don't you know, li- like trying to read a novel with the, with, the, with, the, with the prescription lenses of the actual order. You know, many of us are trying to read the Bible without the help uh, we need to actually get. So, so we need the Spirit of God to, to uh, for the Word to come alive. You know, we cannot read the Bible like any other book. Let me say in simple terms: to understand the Bible. We need the help of the author. Let me say that again. To understand God's word, we need God's help because he is the author of the Bible and he is the the spirit of God. He is the author, the Holy Spirit. We need Holy Spirit's help to understand the Bible. Let's go to John chapter 5 verses 36 through to 39. John chapter 5 verses 36 through 39. I like the, the Passion Translation. It should be up on the screen. But I can provide a more substantial proof of who I am that exceeds John's testimony. My miracles. This is Jesus saying. 
These work which the Father dis destined for me to complete. They prove that the Father has sent me, and my Father himself, who gave me this mission, has also testified that I am his Son. But you have never heard his voice, nor seen his face, nor does his word truly live inside of you, for you refuse to believe in me or to embrace me as God's messenger. You are busy analyzing the scriptures, frantically pouring over them in hopes of gaining eternal lives. Everything you read points to me. In the New Testament, we often see Pharisees questioning the legitimacy of Jesus claiming to be the Son of God. Repeatedly, you see that. And the Pharisees were... Who were the Pharisees? They were religious scholars. They were, they knew the scripture. You, 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 they probably probably knew the law by heart. You know, in memory, they they, they probably they probably could recite even the first five books, you know, even without the Bible. But in the scripture, Jesus points out there is more to knowing God intellectually, uh, you know, knowing God intellectually. So so there is, you know. You know, as part of my training, you know, you can skillfully learn God's word, but you need spiritual help as well. There is there is an intellectual uh, intellectual aspect of learning God's word because the context and, and, and where it was, who it was written to, you know, what was the history during that time, what was the geography, the, the, that's all intellectual. But there is, you need that spiritual help as well. You need that enlightenment through the spirit of Holy Spirit of God. So he confronts the he confronts the Pharisees here. Jesus confronts the Pharisees here, saying that you are busy analyzing or searching some translations, are searching the scriptures because you think they give you eternal life, but the scriptures point to me, point to Jesus. So you are missing the big picture if you are only reading the word to get a thought of the day. Okay, we need to study God's word. The Bible can come alive. The Bible can introduce us to the character of Jesus and genuinely change our life from the inside out. Very important, change our life from the inside out, not from the out, out inside, because that is that has become you know when you when you think that everything have everything is holy uh, on the outside and inside. No, that's hypocrisy. The word of God transforms us from within. And one of the most incredible stories in the Bible, of the Bible, is the account of young Mary. You remember uh, Mary and her visit with the angel Gabriel, telling how she's about to become the mother of, of, of Jesus, or mother of the Savior of the world. And, and I'm not going to read that passage. It is, if you want to read, read Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 37. It is, a, it is that whole story. So Mary's initial response to the angel was to question how she would, could bear a child as a virgin. So that is, you know, how could that happen? But in verse 37, Gabriel says, nothing is impossible with God. Now here I would want you to understand that the word nothing in Greek is to us no rima. Rima is a Greek word for, for, for actually word. And, and, and it means, so that word was revealed to Mary. So you may experience, we may have experienced the rima word of God while listening to a sermon like today. You know, you may have, you may, but it, it's, it, it, it seemed like the words leapt from the speaker's mouth and landed right in your heart. In many a times when we re read God's word, that is what happens. You know, when you read God's word, God's word, and for that situation, for that circumstance, where that, you know, God's word just speaks out. Son, daughter, you were going through this. This is the word for you today. That is God's revealed word. And when it becomes revelation, you know, word God speaks will be void. Because God's word has power and it will fulfill. So here, so the story of Mary. So after the word became revelation to Mary, Mary's response was that she believed. That is very important. She believed the, the, the angel. The, the, she believed the words that came from the angel Gabriel. Because she believed it was from God. And she had settled in her heart ahead of time that, that anything God would speak to her would be true. So, so when the Rima, when the revealed word came from Gabriel, she was prepared to simply obey. And sometimes when we hear God speak, are we settled enough to simply obey? Or are we, are we asking questions? What this? How than this, you know, why, why this? Is this permissible? Can I go there? But when God says, 
are we able to simply obey? Now, if, if, if there are elements of God's word that don't make sense to you, or you don't see the uh, fulfillment of the biblical promise straight away, remember, remember one thing, God is not looking for you to understand. He is looking for us to simply obey. Simply obey. We need to say, God, I may not understand the situation. I may not understand this word of word in, in, in its completeness. But I choose to trust you anyway because this is your word. And there are, there are various ways that you could activate God's word in your life. This may, be, this may be fundamental and foundational truths. But it is a good reminder for us when we study God's word, how to activate God's word in our lives. First, make God's word a priority. We will always make time for things that are important, right? Do we make time for God's word on a daily basis? And this is, the, this is for me too, because this, is a, this needs to be a discipline and practice for, for myself too. Everyone included, make God's word a priority. Just as our body need food for fuel and, 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 and energy, our spirits need to be fed by God's word. It's as simple as that. And as we spend time reading God's word on a daily basis, reading the Bible, it will bring us life. So first, make God's word a priority. Second, believe what we read. Rather than questioning and choose to believe, we choose to believe that the word of God is true. It's as simple as that. God says that it is impossible to please him without faith. Our faith is in God. And sometimes we get, oh, this is said in the Bible. This is contradicting here. Is the Bible really true? And we, you know, the, the evil one will, will put those doubts or put those questions in. No. God's word is true. It's the inspired word of God, the Holy Spirit, who has been the author from the book of Genesis to the to the book of Revelation. There is no contradiction. There is the, the Bible is free of any errors. So if we put our trust in God's word, we will see our faith and confidence grow as we read it on a day to day basis. And Bible says, Romans chapter 10 verse 17, we know that verse. It says, faith comes by hearing Faith comes from hearing the message and the message is heard through the word about Christ. Hearing God's word. Second and uh, third. So, so we had, we had make God's word a priority. Second, believe what you read. Third, meditate on the scripture. Now, now that's, that's something which, which, which we all need to practice, which we all need to, need to have it, not just daily, uh, reading and putting the word of God. Yes, I, it's a tick box exercise. You know, I have I have, I have spent time with. No, think about it daily. Psalm chapter one verse two. We know that the righteous man delights in the law of the Lord and meditates on it day and night. The word meditate means like chewing, chewing the cud. So you you know the process of rumination. Now uh, the the cow, the cow has one stomach, but he's got four compartments in it. And then initially, initially they, they eat all the grass of the field and then, and then it takes everything in the stomach and then slowly, slowly it brings it back. You know, it chews, it chews, it chews, it gets all the minerals out, it gets all the food out. Just, you know, um, that chewing the cut, it's called a process of rumination. Similarly, so, so we need to get the nutrients of God's word simply by just reading and swallowing it. We need to recall God's word. You know, once, once you read the word in the morning, God has spoken. The, take one particular verse and just re keep repeating. And, and God, will, God will speak to us. God will enlighten us through, 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 the, through the opportunity on the day itself. And God will speak to us through his word because his word is alive. And, and when, as we chew it, chew it on a day-to-day on a -day basis, as we chew it all day long, we will be mindful of it and able to do and, and what it says. Basically, be practical. Be, apply that word on a, on a daily basis. And so consistently recalling truth to our mind, it gives a way for the revealed word of God to take place and puts faith into motion. That is what the revealed word of God does. And you may ask me, how, how do we, how do we meditate, meditate on God's word? I mean, there are, there are some points I have said, you know, first speak God's word out loud and, and, there are declarations. The scripture has declarations. The scripture has promises, you know, from from the Old Testament to the New Testament. And find declarations that you can speak out loud to strengthen our heart. And saying the scripture out loud, you know, it also it it 
effectively reminds our soul of what is true when the word comes out of our mouth it will build your faith and that's why you know at um, you know when i was when i was young my parents used to ask us to memorize verses and i found that as a difficult and a and a torturous uh, you know you know um, time to actually my father and mother they used to not give me breakfast without memorizing 10 verses a day that was that was the most most difficult thing for me to to do but but all why 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 my parents had that discipline is because i know uh, now i know that when we go through situations when the god's word comes alive and and i recite it out of my mouth and and on uh, you know when, when it, during those app situations and that word becomes alive because that's a faith putting into uh, putting into motion so for example when when you are battling an enemy you know we we know the verse in first john chapter 4 verse 4 it says greater in me greater is in me than who that is in the world now if, if now this this is actually a first a first person greater is in ben you you can say your name and and then say that is a first person message but there are there are times that like in like in luke chapter 10 was 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 19 it says god has given ben to authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy nothing will harm me sometimes you make it you make it to your first person you put your name in there and declare the, those scriptures over your life so when you're uh, when your circumstances appear overwhelming remind ourselves out loud what is the truth because because we can find scripture for every situation for every season for every circumstance that is facing your life second think about the word day and night and and, and if you are tuned into god for only one of the 16 hours that we are awake so if you if i say 8 hours you're going to sleep and when you're sleeping you don't you don't meditate and you don't think about god's word but if you say if you say for even if you say if you say you are tuned to god only for 1 hour of those 16 hours you know the the, the downside of that is the world may seem more real to you than than god god's truth may not be real because you're spending more time with the world what i'm i'm not, I'm not trying to tell you is to um, sit with the bible uh, 16 hours a day no this this word that we spend time with god in the, in the morning in the evening let that let that be on a, on a, on a, on a, on a minute by minute or even by hour by hour basis let let us take that and think about it day in day out what do we read in the morning which is the verse okay god is my refuge and strength a very present help in trouble you know very present help in trouble so when 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 we are in a, in a in a meeting with our colleagues and you know i am in trouble here lord your your word i read today that this is you are a very present help in trouble you give me wisdom here in this and and god will god's word is alive our faith is in that reading god's word and hearing God, and then and when we speak it becomes when you think about it day and night that faith becomes into motion bring try to bring our world so our secular world in unison with god's world in us uh, the the quicker you make our secular world to god's world you know we make them one the 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 the, the more successful we become because because our secular world should not be any different to our sacred world isn't it secular sacred both both needs to be hand in hand because anything that god has given into us any job that we have any managers that we are any 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 work that we need to do you know it's because god is in there so there is there's no partitions our secular and sacred world can go hand in hand third make meditation practical now when it comes to when it comes to meditation when it comes to you know what is important is the frequency it's not how much it's how often how often do you meditate on god's word and reading reading through the bible three times a year may be a great goal it may be a great achievement as well but it'll be meaningless if you if you are not taking time to allow god's truth to sink into your heart learn to there are always golden nuggets in the bible learn how to find those nuggets and and chew them and ruminate them like a cat ruminate them bring them back to your mind and and throughout the day as we you know we so 
when we when we read scripture you know choose a particular verse study it recite it to yourself talk it about to your friends what do you think about this write it down post on the you know post it on the refrigerator and i've seen i've seen when i go home uh, go to some homes they have they have a hundred and verses on the wall you know do things that that you are reminded of god's truth and and, and, and it may be more beneficial to read a specific verse 10 times a day rather than reading for 30 minutes one particular verse, take it out. And I love the scripture in Proverbs chapter 3. You know, it's, it's, it's a book of wisdom. You know, if you want, underline that, uh, underline what we need to do with God's word in your Bible. But I like the Passion, Passion Translation. It says, my child, if you tr- truly want to live, uh, want a long and satisfying life, never forget the things that I've taught you. Follow closely every truth that I've given you. Then you will have a full rewarding life. Hold on to loyal love and don't let go. Be faithful to all that you have been taught. Let your life be shaped by integrity with truth written upon your heart. That's how you will find favor and understanding with both God and men. You will gain the reputation of living life well. Isn't that a beautiful passage in scripture? So there may be times when we are actively studying God's word and learning his truth and we are getting, but do we consistently do what it says? Because it is, it is in the doing. You may read it, you may understand it, but not apply it. We need to apply it as well. What would it be like if you began putting the Bible into practice day in, day out? We would see the truth of the word at work in our lives, the promises of God being fulfilled day after day when we walk in obedience to God's word. So in James chapter 1 verses 23 to 25, it says, you know, we find a, we find a premise of the promise of seeing God's power work in our lives. So it says here in uh, James chapter 1 verses 23 and 24 and 25, it says, For if you listen to the word and don't obey. Let me, let me read that again. If you listen to the word and don't obey, it's like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourselves, walk away and forget what you look like. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says and don't forget what you've heard, then God will bless you for not reading it, for doing it. God will bless you for doing it. So the application of God's word is so, so important. Reading is good. Meditating is good. But the application is also required. Make our daily time with God's word as a sacred moment. Take time to read God's word. Understand God. Don't let anything distract you. Don't let anything interrupt you. Find one verse. You know, you may be one verse that resonates in your mind. You know, say it aloud. Think it along and meditate on it day and night. Put into songs. Make tunes out of it and see what happens. Let me, let me, uh, let, let me say this. Meditation will turn into revelation. Revelation will activate our faith. And when our faith is activated, things around us will start changing. That is so true. Meditation will turn to revelation. Revelation will activate our, put our faith in motion. And once our faith is in motion, things around will start changing. So let me summarize and conclude. The, see, the same power that is in Jesus is in God's word, is in the Bible. So we have to receive that truth for, God, for the word to work you know, and, 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 and be alive and active in our lives. If at some points, uh, if at some point we find that the word has lost its power, it's not the, it's not the word that is a problem. It is, it is, we are not mixing faith and God's word together. It's, you know, it is, it is important that we, that mix the word of God with faith. We need the skillful uh, knowledge as well as the spiritual knowledge. You, if you want to fall in love with Jesus, Find him in God's word and make the word priority in our lives. If you want more power, consume his word more. We need the spirit of God in order to, for the word to come alive. As I said, you know, we need the author's help. We need the author's help to understand the text that he has given to us. How much ever knowledge we use, no, it wouldn't be enough. We need the spirit of God. And when, it, when, when, when we understand it thoroughly, when, when, when it will genuinely change our lives. You know, when the word becomes revelation, so that's a revealed world. We, God spoke to us about the story. 
no word that God speaks to us will go void. It, it, the word will be activated. And the God of uh, making God's word a priority and uh, believing what we, w- what we read and meditating on script, scripture will make our faith active in, into motion. And then we will do what it says. So God also spoke to us, you know, meditating on God's word, speaking God's word day out. You know, one of the ways to meditate God's word is speaking God's word out loud. Declare or declare scriptures over your situation. Declare scriptures over your children. Declare, declare scriptures over your family. Declare scriptures over your workplace. De- declare scriptures over people who are who are uh, yeah, uh, intentionally hurting and offending you. Declare scriptures over them. It will strengthen you, and it will also strengthen the spirit. And, and 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 meditate on God's word day and night. Ruminate over it because because it brings God's world. And your world together. That is that is that is the beauty of God's God's word, and 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 that that meditation becomes practical, but because because we we choose it to to make it active on a day to day basis, and then we apply God's word, it becomes it becomes uh, active, and we'll, when we choose to obey His word, you know we become more like Jesus. We we our characters keeps changing. So so so. I would I would urge it to each one of us you know do not take God's word lightly and I, and, I, and, I, and as I mentioned meditation will turn to revelation revelation will will put our faith will activate our faith into motion and once we activate our faith into motion things will change you will pray over the sick they will get healed you know, a dead body right in front of you, you pray over them. God's word is alive and powerful. We will raise the people from the dead. The miracles that happened in Jesus' time, we can activate it through God's word because God is, Jesus is, is, um, is manifested in God's word. And when we say it by faith, it is not, it's not our power. It's the power of Jesus that, that, that rests inside of us. Let, let's choose to obey God's word. Let's choose to apply his word. Let's choose to meditate his word day in, day out. And, and God's word will become alive and powerful in your lives. May God bless you. Let's close our eyes and let's pray. Father Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word. Your word says your word is living, active, powerful, sharper than a two-edged sword, O oh Master. So we, we believe it, we receive it. And Father, it is just not that we may believe and receive it, but, but we may act upon it, O oh Master. Lord, we may help us to choose to make your word priority in our life, priority in my life. Day in, day out, meditate on it, Father. Father, speak to us, Lord, Lord everybody who's hearing me this morning. Father, we pray that, that your word may be real to them. It may be not like a fairy tale or, or a fiction, O oh Master. Lord, your, your love has been manifested throughout. From the Old Testament to for the first book of the Old Testament to the last book of, of the New Testament. Lord, you are there, you are manifested in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ has been manifested, O Master. Help us to understand it, help us to meditate on it, and help us to act upon it. We may obey, choose to simply obey the word that you reveal to us day in day out. Help each one of us, including myself, oh Lord. We submit ourselves, we surrender ourselves, O oh Lord. Lord, we may not be just hearers only, but we may be doers of your word. This week, we submit ourselves, our families, our children, our jobs. Father, we pray that that as we as we go in this journey of of uh, understanding you more, Lord Father, you are transforming us from within. That's word, the word of God. It it it, it makes us beautiful from within, O oh Lord Jesus. Lord, I submit and surrender completely. I intentionally want to learn your word and apply it into my life. And I pray that, Father, that may be everybody's decision this day. It may not just be words, but we may do it. We may apply it. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Lord, for everything that is over us. And we pray for blessings. Lord, Father, especially our children have gone back to school this, this, um, the, this month. And, and, Father, we pray protection. We pray peace. We pray uh, uh, an angelic supernatural blessing over each of them lord father every family every parent lord father we may have apprehensions we may may, may be fearful oh lord but lord father our trust is in you and you alone and we rely, we rely on you on on you completely 
Thank you, Master. Lord, you have brought us this far. We owe it all to you. Thank you, Master. Your grace be with us this week. Your spirit lead us in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Let's read the benediction prayer together. It should be up on the screen. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit, soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you faithful, he will surely do it. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. Use God's word. God's word is alive. God's word is powerful. This week, God will speak to us. You know, even if it's a single verse on a day-to-day -day basis, repeat over it, meditate on it, ruminate over it, and God's word would be active and his power will reside in us and, and, and be displayed through our lives. God bless you. Have a wonderful week.